Mr. Millsaps, uh, uh, why don't you just begin talking about growing up, um, not exactly in downtown uh, Ackworth, but out in the country a little bit from Ackworth. Yeah, it was out, it was out in the country. I went over on Antioch Road, made the 434. Then the uh, day I moved in, bought a place above Emerson out here. That last house on the right, they did place Doug's place in Emerson down there. Right. Now that ain't the house. And uh, in 36, and then he sold out to the railroad in 40, first of, about the middle of 41. And then we moved down, come down here, and went out to Crossroads store and on Antioch Road. Uh, no, uh, Baloney. So you, so you uh, weren't born but grew up on Antioch Road? No, I, no, I just there from 34 to 36. Oh, okay. So where do you come back to after you left uh, Emerson? Yeah, we went to Emerson, then me on, uh, oh, that road, go to Crossroads, go and turn left. It's uh, comes over out on... Uh, off of Mars Hill? Off of, on, on, uh, on uh, Cantaline Road. Okay. And Dad bought a place there. It was in. He bought head in. Uh, he bought head in '41, uh -huh. and then I I stayed over there till we did the '49. Uh -huh. and then we moved to over on. Over on uh, can off of, on Cantaline Road. Stayed about a year. Uh -huh. and then we moved to Kennesaw and stayed a year and a half. And then we went over on Woodstock Road, just blow up Grove School, till, uh, and then... Uh, Why was he moving around so much? Well, Dad, Dad, Dad had a place over there, and he had a brother that would, he troubled everybody around, uh, about wanting land, wanting land, you know. He thought it all belonged to him, and carried an old gun around all the time. And Dad says, so before somebody got killed, he's going to sell it. And my half-brother, he owned half of it. And then we moved to, sold out. And then it wasn't long, these two brother-in-laws bought it. And then one Saturday evening, he shot both of them off the tractor, but didn't kill them. Mm -hmm. But they took him and they said his mind was gone, but it wasn't it that... That bottle was talking. Oh my goodness! And so they put him in down in Milledgeville for a long time, and uh -huh. that's where he died at. Huh. Where? Uh, where? And Dad said didn't want to see nobody get killed, you know, but he liked uh -huh. kill two of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, now <clears throat> you're telling us that your father could make just about anything. He could make anything could be made out of a piece of wood uh -huh. or out of a piece of metal. He made chairs for years, and straight back chairs and all, the rocking chairs and all. Uh -huh. And for those chairs, he only got a dollar a piece for them back then. Really? Him and my brother, half brother made them, you know. Uh -huh. Then they'd go to Atlanta's, that leather factory down there where they buy that strips of leather, and that's what they bought them with. Uh -huh. My mother and her half sister and them, they'd bought them with me now. They'd sell them for a dollar. For a dollar a piece. Mm. Wow. Yeah, he done that for several years there, and then we farmed too over on that place. Uh -huh. And what uh, did you grow? Huh? What we wrote We wrote We gra raised uh, corn and sweet potatoes and yellow meated watermelons. Some big yellow meated watermelons. How about that? Yeah. Where did Where did you sell them? Huh? Uh, who was your uh, uh, Who did you sell them to? He just take in. had a little. Old, he had a truck and all the people come there and buy him, you know, and the one that cost you four to five dollars a piece, he'd get a quarter for it. If he didn't, he'd give it to you. Uh -huh. He never got over 50 cents to a dollar for the biggest and weighed 30, 40 pounds a piece. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, did you um, go to Ackworth Elementary School? I went to Ackworth Elementary and, and then there, and then from there to Kennesaw, and I didn't get too much education, you know, about sixth, seventh grade. Uh -huh. Had to help on the farm and all. Right, right. Did yeah. you enjoy farming? Enjoyed farming, yeah. Uh, did you have going to the military somewhere? No, they had me all, as I, I 
got married, you know, uh -huh. in 54. Uh -huh. They got me all ready, but I'd ruptured my side when I was just a kid of a boy. Plowstock kicked me, oh, you know, goodness. and never did have it fixed. Uh -huh. And uh, they passed me all up but that, and they said if they needed me, They'd call me and they'd fix it and go in. Uh -huh. That was in 54, where well, I got married in 54, and that was in 55. Uh -huh. But the war broke in and I didn't, uh -huh. I didn't, never did have to go. Right, right. Korean War is over. By the Korea, Korean War was yeah. over. But you got married at what, about age 20? I got married uh, the March of 6 of 54. Okay. So I met Margie. Yeah, I married Margie. Mac Mickens, we went together about two years, you know, married. Uh -huh. And we had our first daughter in 55, uh -huh. December, or January 55. Uh -huh. How many children do you have? I got three. I got two girls and a boy. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they still live around Ackworth? Yeah, one of my son lives with me. Uh -huh. and then my daughter lives just up the street from me on North Side Drive. Uh -huh. She bought my mother-in-law and dad-in-law's place, you know, Elizabeth and Dwayne Garrett. The Garrett that does the gospel singing. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, now, now, I understand. And the other daughter, she lives at Villa Rica. Okay. And she, she's with a school system, and my youngest daughter's school system, and my boy's with a school system. Is it right? Oh, the two girls got over 30 years, and the boys got over 37 years with a school system. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, what, did, what did they teach? Well, the, they, the, the daughters works in the main office. Uh -huh. it, it over here, over, at the main one over across the Lockheed at Villa uh -huh. Then the boy, he worked 24 years delivering stuff to schools. Oh, I see. What school, schools? School? All of them to Cobb County. Uh -huh. And then they primetized it out in about eight or ten months. They broke a contract with him and went back and he started later then when they got rid of the delivering stuff of driving a school bus. And oh. he'd been driving a school bus. He got about 37 years in and out. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, now I understand your first job was at Unique Knitting Company? Unique Knitting Mail. I Except worked about, about that. yeah, I went and went to work up our board and socks and everything was piece work up there then. Uh -huh. They paid you but a piece. Oh, yeah. If you didn't have nothing for your job that day, you didn't do nothing, but they saved your stuff for your part of things. Mm -hmm. I stayed up there about eight, nine months, and then I went to work down here for, uh, let me tell you something else before then. Okay. And uh, the week that me and my wife married in 54, March 6, 54, I brought home $12 and a half that week. <laughs> okay. Then I went down to the preacher at Warren Hill Church, Irving Brown, he married us, and he asked me, said, I asked him how much else. I said, whatever you think she's worth. I said, she's worth a lot of money. <laughs> but I ain't got much, and I gave him $3 to marry us. Well, that was a lot when you That's a lot of money, $12 and a half a week that week. Yeah, Never did make much. Yeah. And then I, we, uh, then I went and, uh, Went down here to Qualico mm -hmm. in town, and it was stay hot then. And they called it called Qualico later, a foundry, mm -hmm. and worked about a year and a half there, and they went bankrupt. What were you doing then? It was a foundry business, you know, and I was finishing fittings, these brass fittings, grinding them down, you know. And all. Uh -huh. yeah. So what did you do after that? After then, I went to work at Boom's Ace Hardware in Sherman's uh, Economy Auto then, okay. in Ackworth. Okay. Yeah, I hard in on Saturday. Told me to come in Monday, and I said, well, what's the working hours? He said, now, we work six days a week, six o'clock to six o'clock, if we finish. Oh. If we don't, we're seven, eight, or nine, whatever time we finish. Uh -huh. And he says, you will uh, give you a two weeks trial if, at $40 a week. If you prove out, You'll go to, I'll keep you. Uh -huh. If you prove out on that there, he says, you'll go to 45 in that two weeks. Okay. And I went in Monday and worked till to, to Friday morning, went in down there and parked beside the station or a park and got out and 
him and Buddy met me the son, and he went and uh, said, you know what I told you about that work? I said, yeah. He said, now you started at 45. And I worked several years, $45 a week that way. Wow. Six days a week. Wow. Enjoyed every minute of it. But 12 hours and more a day? Yeah, 12 hours a day, and I stayed with them 15 years. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did your, did your wages go up beyond 45 Well, hours? it went up a little bit, but not all that much, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work, but I had, had a wife and two kids then, and then my mm -hmm. boy was born 62, you know. Uh -huh. And then I had three. Uh -huh. But we bought and paid for two house trailers uh -huh. and uh, made it. Yeah. And then I was gone about, I went to work for a city sign service out of Philadelphia, man, a fellow I know, he is over the whole state of Georgia, the whole state of Alabama, uh -huh. maintaining the Phillips 66 stations. Uh -huh. Me and him together had 1,782 of them we had to keep turning and burning. Turning and burning? Yep. Yeah. They lit up, light up signs. Uh -huh. And uh, that was the state of Alabama and the whole state of Georgia. And then we had 19 marathon signs from Knoxville to Tampa. Okay. We kept care of, we kept care of the canopy lights on them, uh -huh. and the high-rise signs 150, 175 feet up, you know. Yeah. Well, so how long did you do that? I done that for about 23 months. Uh -huh. And But I drove from here to Tampa, Florida, many a time, just put in a light bulb on the canopy and spent the night. Wow. Had another station there, you know, we checked it to come yeah. home. Did they provide you a car to they drive? They provided us a truck to drive it uh -huh. for. 40 foot, 49 foot crane on it, you know. But, oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, but we had to climb up so far over that crane, and then we climb on up them signs, you know. Yeah. That's on all of them. Then uh -huh. we had one 95 foot crane we worked off of. Wow. Right, that sounds like but hard that, to work that, too. Yes, yeah, I'd go sometimes, I'd leave Monday morning when I get back Friday night on that job. Wow. Right. But it made good money, and I just got off of it. Mm -hmm. Then Perry and Lumpkins had bought that station from the, it was Ace Hardware. Mm -hmm. I had to went to work for the Booms. It went along, they changed it to Ace Hardware in Shelburne. Uh -huh. and then I went back and I worked for them 16 and a half years. 16 and a half. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was an Ace Hardware? It was Ace Hardware. All that time? Yeah, it was the first I went to work there and it wasn't about six months, you know, they changed from economy to Ace. Uh -huh. And then it's that and then when I left them, the booms just sold it. Uh huh. Yeah. Say something about the booms. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, they're some of the finest people you ever worked for. Mr. Booms and Miss Booms and Buddy, him and Buddy and his dad owned it, and Harry, he went to school. Uh huh. Then they had one sister, Carolyn James. Uh huh. And uh, they were some of the finest people you ever worked When I left the booms, is there. And, uh, went to work for that city, that sign company, you know. Mm -hmm. I went and uh, Buddy gave me and a wife $20 a year for Christmas for three years. That's the boy. Uh -huh. And then he started giving us $50 a year to own. Uh -huh. And the last 20 a year, the last part of it, up to last year, uh -huh. I got a $100 bill every Christmas. Huh. But he died this May was a year ago. Mm -hmm. But he gave me, yeah. for two years, he gave, uh, three years, he gave me $20 a year, and then, yeah. then he gave us $50 a year. Uh -huh. Then he gave me a $100 bill for 20 years, yeah. every Christmas. Yeah. Some fine of people you ever seen. Well, I guess working in that kind of a business, you saw a whole lot of people coming in. Sold a whole lot of people, and I sold a menu a gallon of gas down there for 12 cents a gallon. Is that right? Sold kerosene for a dime a gallon. That was pure kerosene then. It wasn't just K1. Wow. And mineral spirits was a quarter. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Those are good prices. We cleaned the wind. Like good prices now. Yeah, cleaned the windshields. We done it all, you know. Service cars, wash cars, right. and done it all, you know. Yeah. Well, why don't you talk a little bit about Atworth and how you've seen the city change over I've seen the city change from start to finish. If it had left this city alone like it was, and I know it back then, uh -huh. 
from uh, 52 on. Uh -huh. We're going to start on the north end of town. There was a coal yard. There was Ice House. Uh -huh. There was Chandler's Barber Shop. Uh -huh. Miss Jolly's Beauty Shop. Uh -huh. And a restaurant. And then there's a restaurant, and I can't think of what the other one was. And then there's a shoe shop. Uh -huh. and then the little gas station. The red light used to be right in town, right there, where you go and come back from across the there you know, but right. right on that end of town, uh -huh. and there's a little gas station there uh -huh. for that too. Uh -huh. and then across the street there, there's a big warehouse. Uh -huh. and then the hall, there's a depot. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and you liked it better in the old days. If we had left this town alone, this this town would have been worse than hell in Georgia. People come in and see these old towns. Uh -huh. We're right here on Lake Aqua and all of that. Uh -huh. Sure was. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you think they should have left it alone? I sure think they all left it alone. Uh -huh. right. What'd you do for recreation? Well, for recreation, we first one thing and another. And for years, I, when I worked for the Keenels up at Unique Knitting Me, a Bobby uh -huh. Keenland, and he owned that little train they used to own down there. And I run here every weekend for him. Did you? Drove that little train every Saturday and every Sunday. Uh -huh. yeah. For a long time. Yeah. You yeah. go hunting, fishing, those kinds of things? Yeah. Yeah, done a lot of fishing. I never have been too much of a hunter, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. um, did you, uh, you, know, you must have been a teenager when they built um, the, the Ackworth Lake and... and uh, they sure was, yeah. We Kennesaw. lived down at Kennesaw at that time. We lived down there two years, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. go to the beach at all? We went to the beach right smart, but I remember when they started the little dam and they uh -huh. got all them rock off the place at Duncan's farm that they put on this 92 highway, went around the dam, and all them rock piled up on that place there. From the Duncan's... Place in Kennesaw. Oh, really? Mitchell Duncan's place in Kennesaw. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, what's your uh, uh, fondest memories of Ackworth? What, what, you, uh, what, what's your happiest memories, I guess, of Ackworth? Well, I guess when I met my wife and we got married, then I just enjoyed life around here all the time because I'm still up here on North Side Drive. Uh -huh. Yeah, in a, yeah. In a yeah. Tent, two tenths of a mile that long for type of where I met my wife till I married her, and then right. we owned it. Right. North Side Drive, right there at McLean Circle. I got two acres in there and got uh -huh. a, my house and I, one of these cedar houses. And uh -huh. The whole thing, garage and all, is 118 feet long. And I raised a little garden every year. And my, sis, my three sisters and my mother, my mother died in 98. Mm -hmm. And I had a sister died nine years ago. And then the first day of July, my next sister told me she passed away. Sorry. I've got one more sister lives above me in their house, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, right next but you door all to stay them. close together. All close together, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. And two acres, and you must have a pretty big garden. Yeah, I got a pretty big garden. My, my sisters there, they got a, they got a little over acre there, and we do the gardening behind her house, you uh -huh. know. Yeah. What all do you grow? We grow beans and squash and cucumbers and maters and. Hot peppers, I put up a lot of hot peppers, you know, pepper sauce and give uh -huh. people. Yeah. 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 Well, what should we have talked about that we haven't talked about? That you, uh, what would you like to talk about that we haven't covered? I just can't think of much I can say about the, all this other stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I... Then me and the wife and my sister, in 79, the man that built my house, he lived across the street from us. Uh -huh. Me and I had a motor home, me and her did, and our yeah. son, and that couple and their son, we drove out west, from out through Las Vegas, and uh -huh. all in Levada, and yeah. across into California, and all the way around, and uh -huh. the Grand Canyon, and I, we enjoyed that trip. Uh -huh. You said your house was built in 79? 77. 77. Mm -hmm. So you've been in it a long time. Really. Yeah, well, now we had that big trailer we moved hit in in 70. Uh -huh. That 12 by 70 trailer there, and then 79 I had that house built. Uh -huh. Then five years later, we 
we had, uh, that was, yeah, 70, 79 had a house. 77 we had the house built. Uh -huh. and in 79 we drove out to all out west and back. Right. We enjoyed that trip, being the wife and the other couple, and my son, their son. Uh -huh. But you've been in the same house for 40 years now. Yeah, uh-huh. That's great. Sure have. That's great. Um, anything about the churches around here? Yeah. Or? I saved up here in 55 at Orange Hill Baptist Church. Uh -huh. Joan Hitton was baptized and all, you know. Mm -hmm. And my wife, she was blown up there where we went together. Mm -hmm. But when we started going together, I met her, I worked over at that unique knitting mill, you know, and yeah. then she had out there and two more girls, Grady Priest was the boss, you know, okay. and get Doris Garrison at that time. Mm -hmm. They'd meet the bus, and I, when I'd start in to work, they'd be standing there waiting on the bus, they'd wave at me. I told Grady Priest one morning, I said, I'm going to go out here with the R.U. and speak to one of these girls about a date, you know. Uh -huh. Went to talk, he said, who, my daughter, or the Garrison girl, or the Mac Mickens girl? <laughs> I said, the blonde, and he said, that's the Mac Mickens girl. See, I never met her before. Uh -huh. And then I never met his daughter or the other girl. Uh -huh. And Grady laughed, you know, I still see him laugh. He said, now don't get her mixed up with her mother. She worked over in the finishing room, you know. Uh -huh. Bonnie Mac Mickens, you know, with her mother. And, and I went over there and up. asked her about taking her out to the movie on, uh -huh. on uh, yeah. Friday night, you know. Uh -huh. Cause Hudson had a movie theater here in Ackbar. Okay. And we went to the movie. And then when we come back in that night, I asked her, I said, can I see you? Next Saturday, Friday night or Saturday, she said, you ain't coming back going to church with me tomorrow? I said, yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> and that's the way it started. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, well, we went together about two years and then we married. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, I think I'm about out of questions. Yeah. But I, I appreciate uh, okay. the interview. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, maybe we can Met a lot of good people, I tell you. Uh -huh. But I never will forget that station. You know, we had to clean the windshield now. Yeah. And this couple could come in every week, and they had a little girl. She was about four, four and a half years old. She always the cutest little girl you ever seen. Uh -huh. She'd always <laughs> want me to tell her a little joke. Something we give bazooka bubble gum away. Ain't uh -huh. no telling how big a truck it'd take to haul that bubble gum off. I'd give out to kids and the mamas now. Uh -huh. And she had me a little joke every week. One day she come in, she said, Clarence, I said, yeah. She said, you know what a flea is? I said, yeah. She said, you know what the papa flea says to the mama flea? I said, no, I said, her baby is done gone to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I can still see that kid laugh, and that's been 40 years ago, 35, 40 years uh -huh. ago. And the next Friday they come in, fill up a gas every Friday. And she looked at me and says, yes, the granny said, Clarence, what's a sweetheart? I said, now, as pretty as you are, her mother and dad were sitting in the car, you know. I said, as pretty as you are, you'd be my sweetheart. She said, no, tell me. I said, that's it. She said, that'd be a chicken's heart fried in syrup. Okay. Be, I guess that would be a I sweetheart, guess don't you? That would be a sweetheart. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And who was that? that you, you remember huh? her name? I can't remember the kid's name. Oh, sure okay. can't. But she was in there every week. She was in there every Friday and bought gas, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. So just about all of the town, I guess, went through there. Went through there, you know. Sometimes, whenever they needed then to the last, the last uh, time I worked, I worked 15 years with a, uh, 19 years with Jerry Blackman at Kennesaw, servicing cars. Uh -huh. I've serviced more cars, I guess, than anybody in the world. <laughs> so, you know, I've had them move off and move from Plum to Greenville. Uh -huh. When it come time for me to, the cars be serviced, they'd drive both of them from here to Chattanooga and everywhere. Uh -huh. yeah. Now back then you could grease cars in and off. If you didn't couldn't grease them, you take them little plugs out and put in grease fittings, right. and you could grease them in. Uh -huh. Did it make a difference when we started getting all the foreign automobiles? Yep, so made a difference. Harder to. Then all of our American cars went that you couldn't, and lots of your Dodges and your Plymouths and. All that stuff, you know, they had in Fords too, uh -huh. come out with little plugs in them, you couldn't grease them, you screw them little plugs out, uh -huh. put in a grease fitting. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. If I had all them little plugs, I'd tuck in out and change them. You couldn't put them in a 55 gallon barrel. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, uh, sounds like you enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed doing it. All kinds of weather, though. Yeah. So. I enjoyed it. Well, great. Well, uh, thank you very much. Okay.